149th contact. Thursday, October 1, 1981, 4.23 p.m. Billy says it's nice that you also visit me once in our meditation center, my son. Quetzal says I was already in here several times. Billy says I didn't know that, but you've never visited me here. Quetzal says that is of correctness. I didn't come here very often, for security reasons. Billy says are you thinking of the collapse of Semiazur at that time? Quetzal says that is in accordance with the facts. It is really very dangerous for us, although this place would be most suitable for our visits. Billy says I think so too. Of course, it is better if I get taken away by you or if I must go away. At that time, it was really enough for me with the incident with Semiaza. Quetzal says you were very badly hurt, I know, but I fared no differently. But we shouldn't talk about that now because I have a particular reason why I've come here. Today, we want to subject the center to a renewed cleaning. Billy says ah, that's good. Somehow, I think that a damn funny and cold climate prevails here. Engelbert and some others were right about this. There are vibrations present in here that are downright nauseating, destructive, and malicious. Quetzal says that is of correctness, and that's also the reason why I have my protective device in operation. Billy says ah, yes, you take in this strangeness even much more than I do. But this is, indeed, clear because you don't have such an underdeveloped and slowly reactive body as I do. Quetzal says that is also of correctness, but it doesn't just lie with the body alone because it alone wouldn't be able to seize these vile vibrations and be attacked by them. Billy says of course, that is also clear to me. But can you tell me, perhaps, from where these vibrations actually come? Quetzal says they were produced by the mistake that unauthorized persons were allowed to stay and hear. Billy says aha, then the origin probably lies with Peter. Quetzal says your sharp sense is admirable. Billy says this isn't so bad, as even Engelbert and some others also bumped into this solution. On the other hand, there was virtually no other possibility, for only after Peter's granny came in here did these horrible vibrations come about. Now, however, I've probably said something wrong. Quetzal says I don't understand. Billy says it's simple because of the sharp sense, because I said that this isn't so bad, as even Engelbert and some others had gotten behind it all. My words just sound as if I don't credit or concede any sharp sense to my friends. Quetzal says it probably won't be like that. I certainly haven't understood your words in such a way. Billy says you don't, of course. Quetzal says even your group members will understand your words correctly. Billy says maybe, otherwise one will call me a megular maniac once again. But let's leave this. You said that you want to clean the center. About how long will it take, and who will do this? Quetzal says we need about 30 to 35 minutes. The cleaning will be carried out by the little ones as you call them, about which they amuse themselves very much, by the way. Billy says I think that's nice. Wouldn't it be possible that I could get to know these elves once? Quetzal says I will grant you this opportunity, but there isn't enough time for this today because we are in a hurry. Billy says then just some other time. I am, however, already very excited about the meeting. Quetzal says thus the usual. But now, when you go out, you should make sure that there won't be too much noise because they need their rest for the cleaning. Billy says that is clear, I will make sure. Allow me, nevertheless, another question you have now transmitted the entire division of work, even a little more. Quetzal says this more, I did as a result of your conversation with Engelbert, on which, I must confess, I have eavesdropped. Therefore, I think that this expansion is appropriate and that it should find entrance as an ordinal rule. Billy says I understand, but how should I integrate these divisions into the contact reports now? 
Quetzal says simply attach them to this report in continuation. Billy says okay, that's easy. Quetzal says then now, you should go out and be the mindful to remain quiet. Billy says good, then I will see you again after all. Quetzal says that will be so, for I still have to discuss a few things with you, which are not intended to find mention in a report. Billy says okay, then by now, and greet for me, with thanks, the little ones, the elves. Quetzal says they will be pleased, until then, my friend. Sentences 28-421 Personal Work Divisions and Work Area Allocations for the residents of the center at that time and for the core group members who visited the center regularly for longer periods of time, purely internal affairs. Billy says the management and organization of the center and the group. The group members finally have to become independent in every respect so that Billy is relieved and can primarily devote himself just to the mission's tasks, manual activities in the center, etc. and vigorous assistance with such should no longer appear in the future. Billy only has to perform manual tasks if he has the need for it and is looking for a change in activity. All manual activities previously performed by Billy in all work areas must henceforth be performed by competent group members, who will have to have learned these tasks in the meantime. Billy should only have to give counsel and instructions in regards to these tasks in the future because he now finally has to fulfill his extremely important mission task and mission work from which he was held for many years by manual construction work, etc. Just the management and organization of the center and the group comprises much work, especially in a thoughtful form, by what means the burden is very high. Therefore, it is also inappropriate that other stresses are brought over him in the form of disagreements among the group members, when these are not very serious and profound. If all group members keep themselves and hold themselves to the given house rules and ordinal rules, then they can live together and with one another in such a way that no disagreements arise, or if these would, nevertheless, occur, despite all effort and control, then these could be settled among themselves, without serious differences of opinion arising from it. The group has already otherwise appointed an arbitrator long ago, who should be consulted if necessary. Billy is available for personal problems of all group members, of course, and as far as it is possible, he will carry out a necessary conversation, etc. as soon as possible. For some time, Billy makes the time from 2.00 p.m. to 8.00 p.m. available each week, namely on every Sunday, for problems and discussions that can be postponed. Other newly appearing group members are to be incorporated according to their abilities, into appropriate tasks slash jobs in the manual area, which are necessary to build up the center and maintain it as well as bring it to self-sufficiency. Other activities to be carried out by group members in relation to the fulfillment of the mission fall to the division and determination by a group decision, which is to occur in a democratic form after which the group members concerned have to carry out this separate activity under the supervision of the board of directors. Only a full utilization of all group members guarantees a success of the center's superstructure, its preservation and self-sufficiency, as well as the fulfillment of the mission. Every group member has to be clear about this and precisely act accordingly. Anyone who doesn't want to submit to this order is unbearable for the group as its member and must be excluded as the appropriate ordinal rule and statute state. Ordinal rule from the 30th of September, 1981 General tasks and manual activities of the whole core group of the 49 members. For the core group of the 49 members as well as for the secondary core group members the rule of a monthly 8-hour work performance is valid for the assistance and for the building up and for the actual mission fulfillment. This 8-hour work performance is to be kept as it is noted by the given rules. The Mother Center, the Semiaza Silver Star Center, steadily suffers from a lack of necessary manpower, particularly because different core group members only want to be beneficiaries of the teaching, etc. but are not willing to cooperate vigorously in the building up, in the preservation, and in the fulfillment of the mission. This, 
however, only concerns the core group members who reside outside of the center, not the residents of the center, who very dutifully fulfill their tasks every day and very often late into the night, whereby they don't even rest or cease on actual holidays but are steadily active for the center and for the whole mission. From now on, this can no longer continue in such a way because through the untiring efforts of the residents of the center alone, everything in relation to the mission has spread out so far that it has already become world comprehensive in the meantime. Active participation in many various aspects by non-center inhabitants has, so far, only been done by Guido, Hana, and Sisai, while all other members of the group have, so far, not even given their minimum monthly services at the center. The previous way of visits and stays at the center was that only repeated demands bore fruit every now and then when assistance and cooperation were needed. Voluntary service has been an absolute rarity, which can no longer continue in such a way in the future. Therefore, the following rule is applicable from the date of the 3rd of October, 1981 All group members who reside outside of the center, to whom the possibility of a more frequent appearance at the center is given, are to arrange themselves, from now on into the existing house rules, which means that the 30 minute time limit until the reception of work also applies to them after their arrival at the center. Moreover, it is given that these core group members, as often as possible, voluntarily participate at the center and do their part in the building up, in the preservation, in the daily work, and in the mission. In particular, the core group members of the mother center are responsible for the development and dissemination of the mission and the other centers across the entire earth which is why the hardest operations and the hardest performances must be required at this mother center. For this reason, it is also given that the group members who do not reside in the center give their full commitment in the future and are not just mere beneficiaries of the teaching. Pure beneficiaries can no longer be of concern, and group members who neither want to recognize nor see this are unbearable for the center and have a demoralizing effect on those who fulfill their duty and responsibility through hard work. Therefore, if group members appear at the center, who don't reside in it, from nearby or distant areas of the center, then they have to assume their duty and responsibility after 30 minutes. At the same time, however, it isn't given that such group members only make short visits to the center, just to leave the center again before the 30 minute term so that they don't have to cooperate, which doesn't apply. Of course, when such group members who reside elsewhere only appear for the purpose of the meditative exercises or for the delivery of any goods etc. to the center. The earth person has four to five weekends each month, which he has for free time. This is eight to ten days of free time per month, of which, according to the given rule, eight hours should be spent for the center and the mission, etc. But then, a lot more free hours still remain which can also be used toward further cooperation for the center and the mission. Thus, it is given that every single group member, each month and in addition to the eight regular hours, provides further cooperation at the center and this on a voluntary basis. And if a group member is fully aware, in every respect, of his task and the mission to be carried out, then he will also actually be interested in ensuring that the mission can spread and also in the related work to be done. But if a group member isn't aware of this, then he tries to stay away from the necessary work by all means and excuses etc. Such group members, however, affect the morale of ones, who are dutiful, hard-working, and aware of their responsibility in a demoralizing and parasitic manner. In accordance with their thinking and acting, they also aren't sustainable in the group and therefore they must be made aware of this by the board of directors orally and in writing. If, after this, no decisive change occurs in the behavior of the fallible ones then these are to be excluded from the core group within a two-month time period, without the opportunity for a return to a leading group equals core group or secondary core group. A group member, who is aware of his importance in a leading group as well as in the mission and in all works associated with it up to the last forms of his thinking, 
understanding, and comprehension, is well aware, in every detail, of the fact that his active participation is completely necessary in every respect for the mission and all works associated with it and that he can't just appear as a beneficiary and also isn't allowed to do so. A group member who is conscious of the mission doesn't hesitate and doesn't shrink back from actively cooperating at all times, as far as possible, for the mission and giving his best in this regard. However, a group member who is not aware of these values is unfit and unbearable as a group member, which is why he can't continue to act as a group member. These remarks are valid as a regulation as of the 3rd of October, 1981 so they should find entrance in the given order as an ordinal rule and also possess validity for all other still developing groups, and indeed, for all time. The End